Confessions 23 I once heard a learned man say that time is nothing but the movement of the sun and the moon and the stars, but I did not agree. Would it not be more likely that time was the movement, not only of heavenly bodies, but of all other bodies as well? If all the lights of the sky ceased to move, but the potter's wheel continued to turn, would there not still be time by which we could measure its rotations? Should we no longer be able to say that it turned with a regular rhythm, or that its speed varied, or that some turns took more and others less time? When we said this, should we not be speaking in time? And would not our words consist of syllables of unequal length? simply because more time is required for the pronunciation of some than of others. O oh God, grant that men should recognise in some small thing like this potter's wheel the principles which are common to all things, great and small alike. There are stars and other lights in the sky set there to be portents and be the measures of time to mark out the day and the year. This much is plain. But if I cannot claim that a turn of that little wooden wheel is one day, neither can the learned assert that it is not time at all. My problem is to discover the fundamental nature of time and what power it has. It is by time that we measure the movement of bodies. For example, we say that one movement takes twice the time that another takes. By the word day, we mean not only the length of time that the sun remains in the sky above the earth, which determines the difference between night and day, but also the time of its complete circuit from sunrise to sunrise. It is this period that we mean when we say that a given number of days has gone by, because the nights are not counted separately but are reckoned as included in the days. Since, then, a day is completed by the movement of the sun through its total orbit, from the time when it rises in the east until it again reaches the east. My question is whether a day is that movement itself, the time needed for its completion, or a combination of both. If a day were the movement of the sun through a whole circuit, there would still be a day even if the sun completed its course in a space of time as short as one hour. If, on the other hand, a day were the length of time which the sun actually takes to complete its circuit, it would not be a day if the period between one sunrise and the next were as short as one hour. In this case, the sun would have to circle the earth 24 times to make one day. If, according to the third hypothesis, the movement of the sun and the time it takes to complete its circuit together constituted a day, there would be a day neither if the sun travelled through its complete orbit in the space of one hour, nor if it stood still, while as much time passed as the sun regularly takes to circle the earth between one morning and the next. But for the present I shall not inquire what it is that we call a day. I shall confine myself to asking what time is, for it is by time that we measure the course of the sun. If it travelled around the earth in a space of time equal to 12 hours, we should say that it had completed its course in half the usual time. By comparing the two times, we should say that if 12 hours were taken as a single period, 24 hours was a double period. And this calculation would hold good, whether the sun completed its circuit from the east round to the east again in the single or the double period on different occasions. I cannot therefore accept the suggestion that time is constituted by the movement of heavenly bodies. Because although the sun once stood still in answer to a man's prayer, so that he could fight on until victory was his, the sun indeed stood still, but time continued to pass. The battle went on for as long as was necessary, and was then over. I see time therefore as an extension of some sort. But do I really see this or only seem to see it? You will make it clear to me, my light and my truth.